The courtroom showdown years in the making. The key witness in former President Trump's criminal hush money trial, Michael Cohen, is set to take the stand today. Trump's one loyal, once loyal lawyer and fixer will face his former boss as he provides testimony that could ultimately determine the outcome of the trial. ABC News investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. So what are we going to Funding, uh, yes. In September 2016, Michael Cohen surreptitiously recorded this conversation with Donald Trump about the $150,000 hush payment to Playboy model Karen McDougal by National Enquirer publisher David Pecker. When it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you, so... I'll pay okay. no. To prosecutors, the recording is powerful evidence of Trump's involvement in an alleged scheme to buy and bury salacious stories before they could harm his chances in the 2016 presidential election. The jury will hear it again when Cohen testifies against his old boss, as he did before Congress in 2019 when Cohen said Trump ordered him to pay off adult film star Stormy Daniels. Mr. Trump directed me to use my own personal funds from a home equity line of credit to avoid any money being traced back to him that could negatively impact his campaign. The jury has already seen the paper trail, the shell company Cohen opened, how he funded it with a HELOC, the wire transfer to Daniels, the invoices he prepared, the checks Trump signed to pay him back, and the ledger entries where Trump labeled those payments legal expenses. What did the president ask or suggest that you say about the payments or reimbursements? He was not knowledgeable of these reimbursements and he wasn't knowledgeable of my actions. He asked you to say that? Yes, ma'am. The defense called Cohen a convicted liar and said Cohen has a goal, an obsession with getting Trump. Defense attorney Todd Blanche told the jury, I submit to you that he cannot be trusted. And prosecutor Josh Steinglass conceded Cohen has what you might consider to be some baggage. Even the judge said Cohen needed to be told to refrain from making any more statements about this case after ABC News spotted him on TikTok antagonizing Trump. <laughs> Trump 2024, more like Trump 20 to 24 years. The entire trial has been building to this. From Stormy Daniels, the jury heard about sex. From David Pecker, about the alleged scheme to cover it up. Now prosecutors hope Michael Cohen pins the crime on Donald Trump. Diane? Investigative correspondent Erica Tursky, thank you. And ABC's legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer joins me now for more. Brian, we just heard part of that audio recording between Trump and Cohen about that $150,000 uh, hush payment to Playboy model Karen McDougal um, by National Enquirer's uh, David Pecker. How do you expect that to come into play once Cohen takes the stand? When Cohen takes the stand, I'm expecting that they're going to have that recording, probably play it in its full length, and Michael Cohen will have the job, or the heavy lifting job, of explaining the contents of that conversation, explaining why he decided to record it, and then trying to give some more color as to how that conversation carried out with the rest of the scheme. What are the main points the prosecution needs to hit on with Michael Cohen in order to prove their case? Well, interestingly enough, I think that one of the main ones, if not the largest, is his credibility. I think what we're going to see this morning is a large amount of time put towards building up his reputation, building up his credibility, showing how he's connected to Donald Trump and this scheme, but then also connecting the dots, and the dots being the information... <clears throat> Sorry, we've already seen throughout the case those um, checks, the, the paper trail, and he's got to give life and understanding as to how they're all connected to these crimes. And you hit on this already, but in 2018, he pled guilty to tax evasion, campaign finance violations, lying to Congress, which he says he did to protect uh, former President Trump. But even other witnesses have gotten on the stand and essentially said they either didn't like, didn't trust Cohen, or both. So what is the prosecution going to do in order to try to get around that and boost up his credibility, as you say? I think to some degree we're going to see a timeline of Donald Trump's own words as to how he described Michael Cohen throughout his employment uh, with Trump and the Trump organization and then afterwards. I think for the prosecution they're going to try to paint the picture that Michael Cohen was a beloved kind of pit bull, so to speak, that went after uh, Donald Trump's enemies or tried to clear his name in one way or another. And then it's only when Donald Trump kind of threw him to the side that Michael Cohen became the dog that kind of turned on his owner, so to speak. And I think from, from there the prosecution can give light to understand this is why no one likes him. He's on the outside, not in the inside anymore because of these actions, because he turned on Donald Trump, so to speak. All right, Brian Buckmeyer, thank you. And we will be covering this trial all day long. We'll bring you the latest on Michael Cohen's testimony right here on ABC News Live.